Uh, if you want to use this, uh, maybe as a central processing uh, unit in an automotive ECU, yep. then you can connect all kinds of sensors and do the sensor fusion and processing on this one. So that's why we've got lots of uh, high bandwidth interfaces and we've got lots of powerful processing cores. Yeah. So um, as Robert already explained, now we can do the uh, vision processing and AI acceleration plus the radar processing and the, the sensor fusion on that very platform. Hello Apexus, we are at the Cadence booth. We are with Dreamchip. We've got models again. Remember last year we did it with their wonderful BMWs. Go back to that reference. We can show the reference on our video, but we've got an update about what you've been doing. So tell us about what you're doing and what you're showing at Embedded World 2025. Yes, so, so this is the, the third generation of this um, uh, vision and radar SOC platform including Vort and so we did some significant updates on this platform. Okay. So let me walk you through a couple. Yes please that would be great. Yeah so um, we have uh, upgraded so the chip so this is the board that is inside this ECU. Yeah okay and on this Shall chip. Shall I pay that up? Yes. Let's do that. Let's look at it real time. And on this chip we have added a number of additional computer processor cores so there are 13 cores on this chip now and what we added oh. yeah so what I'd like to know is just showing how quickly you developed and changed just just quickly summarize where we were 12 months ago because that'll give the context of how much you've improved so if we were having this discussion 12 months ago which we did what would you have said then just in a few sentences what would you have said about this and then tell us about what you've added. So 12 months before we had a guess, same application is now. We did, we had the same model cars. And it's an AI based object detection. Yep. And the AI object detection, so the neural network is running on a cadence and silica NNA 110. So that's what we had 12 months ago. Yep. So it was very much vision focused. Yep. But now the goal was to make this chip much more versatile to address various sensor modalities and so as you can see here it's also addressing radar and right. how did we do this so we added as you can see here three tensilica vision three for one dsps and so the new thing about this vision dsps it can process camera data and radar data so that means so you're doing that all in the same system yes. all in the same system both camera and radar so now we can bring in the sensor data and run afterwards an AI neural network yep. to do something with the data. Yep. And in addition, what we also added is if it's radar, you need a lot of FFT processing. We added 12 FS FFT accelerators to speed up the processing and lower the cover to such. Absolutely. And in addition, from pre-chip, we added a second generation ISP and Marcus could explain what that uh, brings to the to the system in terms of improving. But the goal is now besides those details, the third generation is a step closer to production quality. So now we have designed for this chip a brand new board yep. with new with a new interface. So this is a G and this L interface. Each connector allows, as you can see here with the cables, to connect four cameras. So that means we can connect up to 16 cameras. So if you have a surround view of all, all types yep. of yep. Uh, um, applications, you can realize what's the sport. So to address uh, 16 cameras, for instance. How many cameras would you have done with the last version? One. 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 Yes. We're just going to repeat that. <laughs> One to 16. Yes. That's in 12 months. Yes, it was. And so we also designed this ECU chassis. So this board is here and you can feel it in terms of the heat dissipation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And so that's a big old heat sink sitting there, isn't it? Exactly. And yeah. this is the evolution from second generation to third generation. Yeah, not she. Yeah. My so our partner Dreamship, my colleague Amit, they would explain what it takes. Let's introduce Marcus into the conversation. Yes, hi. So um, 
Basically, the, the board is a general purpose system on chip, so it's our latest automotive uh, system on chip platform. And we, as uh, just as Robert mentioned, we've got lots of interfaces. So we can connect a lot of cameras, but we also do have uh, PCI Express and the gigabit Ethernet uh, connectors. So that's what you would typically use to connect uh, radar sensors, for example, or LiDAR sensors. So we've got, uh, if you want to use this, uh, maybe as a central processing unit in an automotive ECU, Yep. then you can connect all kinds of sensors and do the sensor fusion and processing on this one. So that's why we've got lots of uh, high bandwidth interfaces and we've got lots of powerful processing cores. Yes. So um, as Robert already explained, now we can do the uh, vision processing and AI acceleration plus the radar processing and the, the sensor fusion on that very platform. Yeah. So somebody had said to you 12 months ago, mm -hmm. you were going to add all of that in. Yes. That's 1 to 16 and LiDAR and doing AI and doing all that processing, would you have believed that we'd be having this conversation 12 months later? Yes, absolutely. I mean... Oh, you would have done. You're supposed to say, no, I wouldn't have yes, done. Yes. Oh, don't, <laughs> don't do that to me. I'm supposed to look intelligent on my own videos. And you go, yeah, 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 yeah that's definitely, yeah, yeah. I, mean, right, oh, this is, I was expecting you to say something completely different, but that's what I know. Go on, this is, keep going. So this is, um, this is an, let's say, a natural step uh, of evolution that we want. So, I mean, the last version was, was the, let's call it a base platform. And it was clear that uh, those kinds of things were missing or it would... It uh, add tremendously value to that. Yeah. So that's that's why we included it that. But of course, you know, those plans take a little bit longer of time. So it's not spontaneously just plugging it in, but it's a little bit more of planning. So, of course, we were already planning ahead by that time. So. Right. right. Um, yeah. And what what we've also got here is the um, the the image signal processor, which does the conversion of the raw sensor image into the RGB image that you see here. So this one has advanced um, debiring capabilities, so less uh, color fringing and it has an improved uh, high-definition uh, uh, HDR uh, processing capability, so to compress the dynamic range like you're used from your mobile phone, for example, for HDR um, yeah. photos. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we're seeing more and more mobile phone technology come into this kind of technology every day. If you want to know where the future is going to be, because you know everything about the future, just look at today's mobile phones and then understand that in 12 months' time, 18 months' time, we're going to see the same thing in these kind of embedded kind of solutions. Right. You, you want the same HDR capabilities for, uh, for automotive because uh, if you think about, for example, it, uh, an exit at the tunnel, so everything is very bright at the outside yep. and it's uh, dark inside and you, the camera needs to also see the vehicles and pedestrians and whatever is inside the tunnel. So yep. that's why you want HDR in automotive uh, yeah, yeah. camera application. Yeah. Do you, do, do you, so when you're talking about things like that, I'm going a little bit off piece because you're not talking about the things you're talking about. Uh, do you see a latency issue as well then with 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 this kind of vision and with with lidar? Is a how, how do you deal with that? I mean, uh, certainly, of course, for for those applications, uh, latency is vital. Because you yeah. just gave an example with the cameras need to be at yeah, right. the moment that they right. go from dark to light. I mean, you in in the end, you want to you want the driver assistance system, so you want the car to brake. And if you have, if you introduce a large delay, then of course that doesn't work in time anymore. It's not going to work. So, for example, that's why the uh, ISP that we're using here is optimized for low latency. So it has a latency of just a few lines of uh, video code, and that's um, that's one of the steps in, the, in in that processing chain. So because, but everything is um, either in a running in a real-time operating system or dedicated hardware. So that's how we um, how we get the how we manage, let's say, a low latency that you that you want. So something in in the range of one or two frames maybe like which is nothing it is still noticeable but you you have to need you have to have some time for processing like your yeah. speed of the car right well uh, one frame matters yes. or many meters yes. translates yes but we should all be driving safely yeah <laughs> of course <laughs> right very good yeah. what would you like to say so just to add, uh, you know, you always want to future-proof your chips because, you know, the workloads are changing and, you know, the, the chip is designed keeping that in mind. So, you know, there, there's a cluster of ARM cores over there and, you know, you may want to keep the ARM free as much as possible. So that's where the, the DSP cores are there so that you can offload a lot of that data and accelerate the, uh, uh, the, the workloads and get a better performance. So, you know, that's one way of doing future-proofing of the chip once it's, the, the IPs are big. The second one, and we, you know, everywhere there's AI, uh, you know, and we have to talk about AI. We so, certainly do. Right. So, you know, there's a way here that, you know, the layers of the operators that keep on changing so fast, not as fast, it's doing much faster than how the hardware is changing. 
So there is a way to you know, offload those non-supported layers onto the signal processors and then you know keep the chip moving and make the best use out of uh, out of the performance of the chipset one thing i want to mention this is done on global foundry's 22 fdx uh, process node and the previous chipset was uh, about 92 93 millimeter square versus this this one is a 217 millimeter square so it's big because it has more processing blocks. Yep. And you know, the customers can use that uh, for multiple uh, type of uh, applications.